Today, live on The View from a Pew, producer and director Max McLean. He's bringing his Broadway hit, The Screwtape Letters, to Ames. It's coming next week. We'll talk to him next here live on The View from a Pew. Welcome to The View from a Pew, a conversation among Christians who are out to grow their faith by asking the simple questions, the tough questions, and the stuff you really wish your pastor would talk about. Come on now, let's reason together. It's your voice we want to hear. The phone lines are open, so join the conversation. Call 244-0077. That's 244-0077. Now here's your host, J. Michael McCoy. Thank you very much. Uh, We look forward to uh, talking to you today. I know you have many choices of radio stations you can tune into uh, or podcasts if you're listening to this on a podcast. And for whatever reason, we've been blessed enough to be on your RSS feed or you've gone to our website and uh, you've listened to this show. So we thank you. We are going to date this show today. It's the 8th of April in the Lord's year 2015. And that's because we're going to be talking about an event that's going to be happening a week from tonight. No, I'm sorry. A week from yesterday. Uh, April 14th, up at C.Y. Stevens Auditorium in Ames, and that is the incredible C.S. Lewis's Screw Tape Letters. Uh, the uh, the play is going to be here, and I've got the uh, director and producer, Max McLean, on the phone with me. Max, how are you? I'm well. Thanks for having me. Well, thank you very much. I know you and I kept hitting and missing, and I appreciate you taking some time out of your busy schedule. Now, Oh, no worries. I've seen the Screw Tape Letters. I saw one. It was in Omaha at the Orpheum not too long ago. Mm-hmm. But for those people who have never seen it, how if you could write on the back of a business card the emotion that's going to stir within them when they come to see your play, what would you write? What would you tell them? The emotion that's going to you're going to see you're going to understand spiritual warfare in a way that is going to make you want to do something about it. Okay. All right. And when you say do something about it, you mean kind of probe into your uh, activist uh, uh, inner being. Well, that's the whole point of theater is to engage the imagination so that it sparks you to do something, to to be changed, to change your point of view, change your opinion. Uh, The Screw Tape Letters is about spiritual warfare from a demon's point of view. Uh, Lewis was... Uh, trying to get us to see that Satan masquerades as an angel of light, uh, and that we must not be ignorant of his desire. Uh, we must not be ignorant of his devices. Uh, he goes about like a war- roaring lion, seeking whom he will devour. And uh, Lewis knew that, and he really wanted to wake uh, most people from their slumber of uh, how they think uh, they are living their lives. And quite frankly, what is happening from a spiritual perspective is that they're, uh, they're being puppets to uh, a baser desire that's leading them down the soft path to hell. Max McLean is our guest. He is the director of the Screw Tape Letters, also the producer. Again, it's coming to CY Stevens Auditorium in Ames next Tuesday night. And if you haven't got tickets yet, tickets are still available. And uh, uh, I'm going to be there. Uh, it's my birthday the next day. So my wife and I and my pastor and his wife and uh, a couple of good friends of ours are going to go up and we're going to have a, a wonderful time. And uh, Max, I've, I've, I've shared with people that, um, um, yes, you'll be entertained. And yes, there are times when you'll laugh out loud. Uh, but most of all, you're going to walk away like a good sermon and go, hmm. And as you said, you're going to be motivated to do something. What would you like them to do? Well, I mean, it is theater, so the first and foremost, you, you do want to be entertained. Most of the people will come uh, uh, and really have a, a very good time because they're going to be engaged in one of the greatest minds of the 20th century. Uh, and uh, But uh, beyond that, there's going to be moments of conviction, uh, and that's what Lewis intended. And then I think that uh, for some people, it'll be a life-changing experience. So those are the things that Lewis wanted to do, and we're very faithful to the book. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, the piece has been around. You saw it at the Orphan Theater in Omaha. It's been, uh, uh, we've been to almost every major market and ran in New York for nine months, Chicago for six months. 
uh, the show really has this penetrating way to get inside your head. And that's, of course, what uh, what uh, Lewis wrote. I mean, Screwtape himself is this master of the universe character who loves the way he looks, loves the way he talks, loves the way he dresses, smartest guy in the room, he's pure pride. And um, um, we just see how he operates as, as Satan's chief psychologist. Uh, Max uh, McLean is our guest. Um, when you were... When you take this around to different places in the country, um, mm -hmm. are you ever, um, what's the word I want? Are you ever attacked? And obviously I don't mean physically, but are you ever attacked by those people that think you are uh, raising up and glorifying the devil? Um, I, I think that, that uh, it, it doesn't know. I, I think people see what uh, Lewis is trying to do. He's, he's, he's using humor, he's using satire to awaken us. I mean, the, the sort of things that Lewis is teaching us through this work that you hear every Sunday, but you're hearing it, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. They're ex it's exhortations. You take us as, yes, I understand, and then you go on to your thing. But when you hear it from the opposite point of view, where you know the where what Lewis has done, he's created this morally inverted universe where up is down, good is bad, God is called the enemy, uh, Satan is called our father below, and you see the the exhortation to yes, you know, be selfish. Yes, you know, you're the most important person on this planet. Uh, you you deserve your rights. Um, don't let you know your time is your own. Uh, on and on and on, and all of a sudden you go, wow, and that's exactly what the enemy wants. And so what we've tried to do, and of course, again, with theater, is you, you take this marvelous book and you, you give it this, uh, this narrative uh, that uh, allows the, uh, these major points to be hooked or anchored on a line that just carries you forward so you're not really even aware that you're being preached to. What 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 brought you to the point where you wanted to invest your time and money and a part of your career in bringing this book, C.S. Lewis's Screw Tape Letters, uh, into the theater? Well, that's interesting. You know, our, uh, I I I'm the artistic director for Fellowship for Performing Arts out of New York City, and our and our mission is to produce theater from a Christian worldview to engage a diverse audience. Uh, and so we've done lots of theatrical pieces, Mark's Gospel, Genesis, m many others. And I was doing one at a professional theater in New Jersey, and and a, and a uh, theater professor from Mad uh, from uh, uh, Drew University in Madison, New Jersey. Uh, saw it, and he sent me an email saying, I really love your work, and I think you guys really ought to take a look at the screw tape letters, and you'd be a really good screw tape. And uh, I didn't know if that was a compliment or not. <laughs> but but I was intrigued because uh, I'd read the book, and the book had a deep impact on me in terms of the, how I'm describing you, because uh, I read it as one of the first books I read as a, when I first came to the Lord. And, uh, and I just, as soon as I read, I said, I know this guy, you know, I, I know who he is, you know, he's been in my life all the time, mm -hmm. you know, just whispering in my ear, all these things that, uh, about myself and, and, uh, and I just said, now he's been exposed. Um, and, uh, so I thought, well, okay, I was intrigued. So I said, well, I didn't see it as theatrical literature, but I said, you know, let's give it a go. So we, uh, we approached C.S. Lewis estate and asked them for the rights. They gave us the rights. And uh, we produced it first. We did a development production in 2006, another development production in 2007, both in New York. Uh, then we started, we went to Washington, D.C., and for some reason, D.C. must love screw tape because they just packed it out. I was shocked uh, how, how, uh, how it resonated there. And then we t went to New York, and, oh, and since then, over a half million people have seen it. Now, I, I never, I knew that we would get an audience if people trusted the fact that we would give a fair and faithful representation of the book, and that it would be entertaining. Um, but I had no idea that it would have this longevity. 
You know, when uh, Max McLean is our guest, he's the uh, director and producer uh, of the Screw Tape Letters, which is coming to CY Stevens Auditorium in Ames next Tuesday, uh, April 14th. Tickets still available. Now, you don't play Screw Tape anymore, though, right? No, I uh, I played him for a while. I uh, I will play him occasionally, uh, but uh, the the current actor is uh, Brent Harris, who who was Scar in The Lion King, and he's also played a lot of uh, major uh, uh, roles around the country. and And he's an he's the person you saw in, in Omaha. Okay, uh, how does he? How did you study to play the role of the devil? <laughs> You know, I mean, a lot um, well, of actors. Study, if... You know, the, 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 it's interesting because I mentioned that he was a master of the universe character. Love the way he looked, love the way he talked, love the way he dresses. So, you know, there's parts of, of, of yourself, the worst parts of yourself, that uh, you, as an actor, you capture for the purposes of the play. Uh, in many ways, he's like Iago and Othello, who brings you into his confidence in order to destroy you. Uh, he's a little bit like Hannibal Lecter in Silence of the Lambs, who has mm. this uh, this um, uh, aesthetic, outward aesthetic that loves the finer things in life, that's hiding this cannibal inside. And in some ways, he's like uh, uh, oh, uh, Lewis Black, who has this mm. this vocal uh, commitment to the point of madness. Uh, so these are some of the things that, that we use to help tell the story. But the, the main thing we did was really trust Lewis's words. Uh, the safest road to hell is the gradual one, the yeah. gentle slope, yeah. soft underfoot, hey, without uh, Max. milestones or, or signposts. You um, know, those are the kinds of words that, that get into your uh, consciousness and, and – uh, uh, make you realize that you're you you need to do something. Uh, Max, this is uh, Frank Holzhauser. I'm the co-host here with Max. Frank, who? Holzhauser. What's your middle name? Thomas. Frank Thomas on Frank the radio. Thomas. <laughs> well, you certainly have the laugh for it. Uh, but let me ask you: Do, do you think uh, Satan fears anything more than a Christian on his knees in prayer, or a Christian knowing thine enemy? Say that again, please. Uh, that a, that Satan fears anything more than a Christian on his knees in prayer, and that a Christian would know thine enemy. Yes, I think that's true because uh, he's pure pride, and and what challenges pride is humility, and and you're never more humble than when you're in your, on your knees in prayer. Because you're at the foot of the cross. He who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Well, Max, in 1975, I was in an evangelistic series where the evangelist uh, put up a, a, a study number that said 46% of Christians at the time didn't believe in a literal devil. Does the devil have the game half won or half the battle won if half the Christians don't believe in him? Um, absolutely, because if, if, uh, if you don't believe he exists, then... You know he he has free reign, um, and and that's a real shame because the the Christian life doesn't make sense unless there's a supernatural element of supernatural good, and then supernatural evil. That is, and and particularly when you become a Christian, uh, what happens is before you're a Christian, you don't know he's, he exists, so he can you know just kind of word. That's what that was my experience. Uh, but when you become a Christian. You realize how he's working. Um, I was just reading Lewis the other day, and he was he was saying that you know only good people know that they're bad. You know people that are really trying to do what's right. You know following their moral conscience, following the Holy Spirit, because we know how difficult it is. We know what the battle is. Uh, bad people don't know they're bad, um, and uh, and that's what uh, and Satan can do a lot of you know is doing a lot of damage because people think what I'm doing is good. You know. Max McLean, our guest. Now, I understand you have a time limit today, Max. I'd, I'd love to help, ha, uh, hold you over for another segment. but Sure, let's do it. Oh, is, would that be all right? Yeah. All right, that'd be great, because I've got several other questions, and I know Frank does too. Uh, outstanding interview today with Max McLean, who is the director and producer of the Screw Tape Letters, which is coming to C.Y. Stevens Auditorium in Ames next Tuesday. And I really can't ask you enough to please go to see this play it's very important in our christian walk 
that we get exposed to such wonderful art as this production is to help us understand how we have a relationship with the accuser. Uh, we're coming up next again with Max. That's great. He's hanging around. That's live next here on The Truth 99.3. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Credit cards are like grandkids. They love you, sometimes get out of control, and it's fun to get a new one. Who can stop them from piling on? Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of Des Moines. At the end of the day, you can give these grandkids back, but you're stuck paying off bad credit card debt. We can help you put the fun back into using credit cards responsibly. Right, kids? Yeah! If you need help getting credit cards off your back, call Consumer Credit of Des Moines. Hey. Psst. Let me let you in on a little secret. You ready? Always try to do business with people, not places. Especially if you seek honest Christian business people. And when it comes to my car, I really need to trust who's working on it. Now, my family is so blessed. A few years ago, we found a family-owned automobile repair shop that operates as a Christian business also. Open. Honest, reliable, trustworthy. It's Amco on Hickman Road in front of Kmart. And it's a family-owned Christian operating business. This family treats your car as if it was their car. Everything from oil changes to transmission repair and everything in between. So the next time you feel the need to be at peace with your choice of who you can trust with your car, give Amco on Hickman a chance to serve you. And tell them Max sent you. If you sit in the back view or the front view, it's your voice we want to hear. The phone lines are open, so call 244-0077. Now, here's J. Michael McCoy. Thank you very much. 21 minutes after the hour. I very rarely date these shows, but I'm going to today because this is a timely show. It is the eighth day of April in the Lord's Year 2015, and uh, this is The View from a Pew. I'm J. Michael McCoy. If you haven't listened before, I want to thank you. Thank you for listening. This is my favorite job in the whole world, and I couldn't do it without you. Coming up next uh, Tuesday at C.Y. Stevens Auditorium in Ames is one of the most spectacular uh, Broadway plays I've ever seen. And I, I admit, I don't go to a lot of Broadway plays. My wife does take me to uh, the Des Moines uh, uh, Community Theater about three times a year, so I get to see stuff there. And obviously I go when my grandkids and stuff are in. But a year ago, I drove over to the Orpheum Theater in Omaha because I wanted to see the screw tape letters. The book had mesmerized me. And you and I have talked about this on the radio for years. I've always told you that you need to read that book. A year ago, I tried to get them to come to Des Moines. And uh, as uh, no luck would have it, remember, Machism number three, coincidence is God's way of revealing himself. They were already in discussions with C.Y. Stevens Auditorium and Ames, and they're coming. And the man who made it all happen, the director and producer and the original Screwtape, who is the devil, the accuser, 
in the production is on the phone with us today, and that's Max McLean. Uh, with and what's the name of your production company again, Max? Uh, Fellowship for Performing Arts out of New York City. All right. Uh, are, do you think you'll ever do the Great Divorce? We're doing it now. Oh, we're it's, uh, we're, uh, we're, it's right uh, this weekend. We will be at, in Mil- We were in Chicago. And we'll be in Milwaukee at the Paps Theater in Milwaukee uh, Friday and Saturday. Uh, we'll be in Grand Rapids. Uh, you can go to our website, cslewisonstage.com, for that. And then for the, for the screw tape itinerary, it's screwtapeonstage.com. And All right. Great Divorce on Stage or Screw Tape on Stage. But, yeah, we have several production co- productions on. And, and the main reason we want to do The Great Divorce is because it is actually spiritual warfare from the heavenly point of view. Yeah, uh, that's so. It's two sides of the same coin, and it's a magnificent production. I, I uh, if you get a chance to to see it, uh, we're very proud of that show. Uh, they, the, we'd love to do both shows. I think actually we're going to be put them putting them on in repertory in New York uh, sometime in 2016. Well, I'll look at your schedule and see if you've got Omaha or uh, Des Moines booked yet. And if not, I'll uh, get together with the good folks at C.Y. Stevens Auditorium and try to get uh, you guys on the road and get you over here one of these days. Because you're right. I would love that. Screw tape that. Letters and The Great Divorce is the, the other side of the coin mm-hmm. in spiritual warfare. Uh, once from the heavenly standpoint, and that's within us as sin, and the other through the accuser's eyes, which you call or which C.S. Lewis called screw tape. Mm-hmm. Um, great play, both of them. Um, here's a question. I don't know if you know you heard the name of this show, but the name of this show is The View from the Pew. And for 20-some years, I have had pastors, preachers, and teachers on, and I'm kind of like the guy that holds up my hand in the middle of the sermon and <laughs> yeah. says, well, hold on, talk to me like I'm a six-year-old. I don't understand this. And one of the questions I always ask is, do you, so Max, I'm, ha- I'm asking this question to you, do you have a relationship with the accuser? Um, I do not have a relationship with the accuser uh, in a way that I would want to have a relationship. I feel sometimes in bondage to him. Um, I do feel like the old man gets in the way. Um, and uh, I think that um, th- that uh, the uh the that his power is there when we allow when we listen to his voice uh and that's why we need to put on the armor of god uh because the the voice of of uh, the lord is a more powerful voice but it does require that we listen to it um uh, max mclean is our guest he's the uh, director you threw me on the word relationship well, because uh, that's that that's the word that threw me. Uh, it, it's funny. I would say no. It's funny you should say that because the first time I asked my wife that question, and my wife's an incredibly brilliant, wonderful woman, she looked at me and, of course, say the word relationship to a woman, and it means something else. Now, yes. here's the example that I gave her. Uh, my wife and I live in a wonderful uh, community that is a um, uh, an association. All right. Right. And I don't like most of the people in my association. It's just the way it is. There are a lot of wealthy people, a lot of rich lawyers and doctors, and they kind of have their own little uh, Garden of Eden right there, and some of the rules that they make up are, are kind of ridiculous. So, so I don't like them, and I don't spend time with them, and I hardly wave to them. But to say I don't have, an associ- or I don't have a relationship with them is very dangerous because mm-hmm. they have control over part of my life. And it's, it's that way. I talk about a relationship. If a man and woman has a child and they divorce, whether they ever talk again, they have a relationship together because they share something they love, and that's that child. So that's kind of where I'm coming from on the relationship. I want people, I think much like you, I want people to know that he's there all the time waiting for us to slip up, to to, to goof up. And so he can enter our lives and 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 show how we're not so godly as we think. Well, you know, I, I think the point of um, of uh, this, you know, if 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 I was going to boil it down to what um, the, the the lesson of both great divorce and and screw tape is, is that. 
uh, every time we make a decision, every time, you know, we have so many choices in a day. And every time we, we make a choice to do one thing over another, we are, uh, and, and of course, you know, we make hundreds of decisions every day. Uh, and over the course of a lifetime, that central part of us, that part that uh, that chooses, you know, that's really who we are, uh, changes. And it is changing either to become a more heavenly creature or a more hellish creature. Mm. And it all happens at the moment of decision that we have to make, you know, whether I do this thing or that, whether I do the loving thing or the selfish thing. And, um, you know, uh, the idea of, of loving someone that you don't like, that's a choice. That's something that you have to will yourself to do. And, and then what happens, the Holy Spirit gives you power to, to do it. But screw tape points and says, you don't, you don't like that guy. So treat him badly, you know, ignore him, make him feel bad. You know, that's, that somehow puffs you up and, and that, that choice and you make it repeatedly, uh, will, will change your soul. And that's a secret that Lewis knew about himself. And he wanted to make us all aware that that's what's happening uh, every time, you know, we, we do one thing as opposed to another. It, it is C.S. Lewis's, now I want, I want to say this right. I know there are plays out there, there are scripts that great actors and directors can make a mediocre script into a great play. Mm-hmm. And then I know that there are great scripts that are ruined by mediocre actors. That's we right. know C.S. Lewis was a very good writer, but the screw tape letters that I saw at the Orpheum was incredible. You, mm-hmm. you, you took that book and you made it come alive into a, a dimension that I never got when I read the book. Well, when you read the book, there's, there's a couple of things. There is a story arc in the book, and it's a, it's a hunt story. Uh, Screwtape is the predator. A patient who is sort of an everyman like you and me is the prey. And, of course, the patient really is C.S. Lewis. He's, you know, one of the reasons we like him so much is he's so generous uh, that he, you know, he reveals so much of his own uh, spiritual battles in his books. You know, he's the patient in screw tape. He's the narrator in the great divorce. Uh, and he, he tells his own story. Uh, and so the, the arc of the play, uh, that, that is the hook that allows all these brilliant ideas to hit home is the journey of the patient who begins the play is spiritually indifferent. Uh, and then in the course of the play becomes quite devout. And this in spite of all the efforts of Screwtape to ruin his life. And that's, of course, because of the presence of Screwtape's enemy, God, who is working behind the scenes in the enemy's life, uh, in, the, in, in the patient's life. And then, and then the, other, the other story arc uh, in the play is um, Screwtape. What happens to Screwtape, who begins the, the play, the, begins the story as this master of the universe character, and then and he thinks that this patient is just an easy-peasy mark, you know, uh, he's going to be devoured, uh, like a you know, roaring lion devours a, a meek little lamb. And uh, all of a sudden, he feels like he has to roll up his sleeves and, and has to work a little bit harder, and then by the end of the play, he's a defeated devil. And that's the catharsis that uh, that theater brings that allows the story to uh, be, first of all, entertaining as theater, but also be engaging as theology, as literature, and as uh, uh, pedagogy, you know, teaching us mm-hmm. the way of the Lord. Hey, yeah. uh, Max, this is Frank Thomas again. Uh, let yeah. me ask you this. Um, in in playing your role and producing the role, have you found yourself under extra attack from Satan in your in your life? Uh, I am become more aware of the the attacks that I was unaware of before. Oh, okay. Uh, and I think that's what's uh, that's what's so interesting about Screw Tape because um, the way Lewis perceives spiritual warfare, it's the banality of it. 
it's the mundaneness. It's not the sort of the exorcist types of big explosions of 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 uh, power encounters. It is much more subtle and benign, banal, not benign, banal. It's like the banality of evil, and and how he just flattens us out from really having extraordinary joy in the Lord to this kind of flat, nothing uh, person that just kind of goes with the flow. Lewis says only dead things can, uh, dead things go downstream. It's alive things that can fight the current and go upstream. And that's what he's asking us Christians to do. Uh, Max McLean has been our guest for the last two segments, and I can't thank you enough, Max, uh, uh, not only for being on the radio, but most of all, just doing this project. I think that you, uh, and I call this your ministry. This is. is a ministry that you bring from community to community, kind of like Billy Graham. You know, used to go from community to community, and he'd go to the auditoriums in Sioux Falls and in the small towns all over America, and um, um, he'd present his case for Jesus. And in many ways, that's what you're doing. And I, I just want you to know that I really honor you and the men and the women that put on this play, and I look full, so forward to seeing it again uh, here next Tuesday. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoy the show and look forward to, to bringing the show to Ames, and I'm hoping that a lot of Iowa State University students will uh, take advantage of it. Yeah, yeah. God bless you, sir. Thank you very much for spending your time with us today. And I can't wait to see the great divorce here in uh, Des Moines, Ames, Central Iowa, whenever you guys can put it into your schedule. Will do. Thanks so much. All right. Thank you very much. Max McLean has been our guest. He is, um, I don't know, he's just one of my heroes. You know, he, he directs, uh, he makes a book, C.S. Lewis's Screwtape Letters. He makes that book just come alive. And that's the talent of him. All right. When we come back, should Dowling Bend... There was a protest today outside of Dowling High School. Students, teachers, and alumni. They don't want to be seen as the, as the school that won't hire the gay person. Should Dowling break? One eight. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. I'm Brian Leach, owner of Service Legends, and my position is Chief Talent Officer. I'm Nicholas Wondershide. I am Bernie Hobbs. And I'm the service manager. Marketing director and client relations manager. Everything that we do is about ensuring that we exceed your expectations. Our clients are important to us. 100% satisfaction. We're not just focused on heating and cooling. That's the easiest part of our job, actually, is fixing furnaces and air conditioners. Everyone that we come in touch with, we want to improve lives. Bottom line is, we've got our installation guarantees, 25% energy savings guarantee, comfort guarantee, temperature selection guarantee, property protection guarantee. 100% satisfaction guaranteed, fixed rate or it's free. All of those guarantees are backed up with a 100% money back guarantee to hold ourselves accountable to making sure that you get what you're after. Just fixing the problem today, if they have another problem five days down the road, it's still a fixed rate or it's free. We use what's called straightforward pricing. Our technicians are gonna give you an exact to the penny price on what it's gonna take before they move forward with any repair. That way you know what to expect. It's the same price every day. No surprises. If you get off work at five o'clock in the afternoon, you come home, you realize that, oh, my furnace is broken. Now you need to call somebody out that night. You shouldn't have to pay more for that. We're guaranteeing service 24-7. We run afternoons, evenings, nights, weekends. We're staffed to work that. Phone rings at 3 in the morning. You'll get one of our representatives answering the phone every time. We're not sending you out to Timbuktu in some call center. It's our service legend team members, our mission control team. I'll take a call anytime. And then they answer the phones same way during the day as they do at night. It's a great day at your service company. How can we make you smile? That's the only way to provide true 24-hour service. When you're able to let somebody actually live in their home safely when they weren't able to do that before, where they don't have to stay up at night and worry about, is the heat going to come back on? Are we going to freeze the pipes? Is the baby in the room next door going to be sick because they got too cold? When you're able to help somebody overcome challenges like that, that's impacting a life. That makes a difference. I get goosebumps thinking about it. I love the team. I love the people that I work with. <laughs> we have fun, but we work hard. I call them my ambassadors of legendary service. If you could just envision what that is, that's who we're sending to your home. They literally will call in, pick up the phone and call and say, hey, I want to talk to your manager. And I get on the phone, they're like, that technician that was at my house was the greatest technician ever. That's cool to me. 
We want to brighten people's days. Every person that we have going into the house has gone through an extensive background check. Drug testing, we have a very thorough interview process that one out of 140 people make it through. If we promise you something, that's what you're going to get, no matter what. We're here when you need us to protect the safety and comfort of your family. If you're not happy, we're gonna make it right. If we're willing to put 100% money back guarantee on what we do, what type of work do you think we do? Give us a call. We're there for you 24-7, 365 days a year. Enough said. If you sit in the back view or the front view, it's your voice we want to hear. The phone lines are open, so call 244-0077. Now, here's J. Michael McCoy. All right, 22 minutes before the hour, uh, and uh, we are uh, live here on the radio. And uh, um, if this was not a Christian radio station, if I was not a Jesus freak, uh, this would still be the top story in town. And it just happens to fall into uh, uh, Frank Thomas, my co-host. Uh, by the way, he's, he's got another different last name, but we're going to change that. We're just going <laughs> to his middle name is Thomas, so he's Frank Thomas from now on because his last name is hard to say. What is it? Holger Holger Housey. Yeah, it's a radio name. Yeah. Um. Because this is right in right in Frank's wheelhouse. My wheelhouse. Uh, um. I I on the other hand, I'm I'm a little more. Uh, I'm a little gentler on this topic, and probably a lot of you wouldn't agree with me. Um, but that's okay, because I don't think anybody's wrong, and I don't think anybody's right. But Dowling thinks somebody's wrong. And Tyler McCubbin thinks somebody's wrong. And today, students and staff and alumni came out at Dowling High School at 1.30 this afternoon in the rain. Huge crowd. Huge crowd. And said they think somebody's wrong, and nobody agrees on who it is. These students and this alumni and these staff members came out to say, we want you to hire Tyler McCubbin. Now, I, I look forward to seeing some of the interviews. Channel 8 got a good lead on this. Um, do they like the teacher? Because this is a very well-liked teacher. He's been a substitute teacher there. He's been a volunteer track coach. Uh, everybody likes Tyler McCubbin. When they had a full-time opening open up at Dowling, Dowling thought, well, let's talk to Tyler. Everybody likes him. He knows the school. He knows our kids. Every he's great. And in a background check, they found out that Tyler is engaged to another man. They are living together, and they plan on being married. And that is not within the moral conduct code of Dowling High School. Uh, and so the offer was rescinded, and he was not hired. And the backlash is loud and strong. So, Frank, uh, should I'm, and I'm going to make a case here for Tyler. Um, he's a great teacher. He was good enough to teach and coach the students before. Um, he doesn't wear it on his sleeve. He didn't try to prove a point by uh, asking for a job and then they turn him down for this. He's simply living his life as a follower of Jesus at a Catholic school teaching kids, but yet because of his decision outside of school to follow homosexuality, he's lost his opportunity for a well, job. Well, if you've got a set of standards, you should stand by your standards. And, um, you know, this the, giving into this at this point, if they've made a decision not to hire him, giving into this point just gives the, the, the gay agenda more ammunition. Because they're already going across the battlefield shooting the wounded because they don't want no prisoners in this battle. So I think if, if, if Dowling has made the decision and they've made the decision based on those standards, then they should stick by those standards. Did they make the right decision? Well, I don't necessarily believe people should be discriminated against in the, in the, in the job area based on their homosexual preference, or I mean their, their sexual preference. But like, as I said before, if this is Dowling standards that they hold across the board to everybody, then they should stick by their standards. All right, let me ask you this. And by the way, I'm not disagreeing with Frank at all today. I'm just kind of letting Frank take the lead on this because this is a topic that's very passionate to him. What's passionate to me, what's passionate to me 
our religious freedoms. Well, Mac, I might not be able to hit a 100-mile-an-hour fastball, but you set one on a tee, I can hit it out of the park. And, and, and I'm just saying here that I, I've done a little study this week that I think would apply to this topic. And you'll find this story in the book of Judges, and it talks about uh, the battle that uh, Maraz, Deborah was trying to uh, get the fight going against uh, Sisera, and Barak was Barak was leading the fight, and Miraz would not join the fight in God's cause, and there was a, cu- a curse pronounced on Miraz for not joining the battle in the, ha- in the inhabitants of Miraz. Now, some of the things that the, some of the traits that Miraz had was a lot like the traits we have today: lukewarm, apathy, neither hot nor cold, neither for nor against. You got to stand up for something in this life, or you stand for nothing. So if, 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 if we as Christians are going to stand up for Christ and we're going to stand up for the battle, then don't back down and don't apologize. What's your voice? What's your opinion? I want to hear it. 515-244-0077. 515-244-0077. It's your voice I want to hear. Now, if this was a government school... Frank, so what you call a public school, I don't call them public schools, I call them government schools because they are run right. by the government. If this was a government school, should they allow uh, an open uh, a gay person to teach within that system? Absolutely. Okay. Um, I, I'm, I'm glad to hear you say that. I stand for religious freedoms, and no one deserves religious freedom more than a church. Or a school. You know, I don't know about ministries and not-for-profits. I'm sure they'd tell me, you know, would I have, would I have a, 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 a person who is gay on this radio show? Yes, I would. I will. I've invited Tyler. He's accepted. And we will give him the utmost amount of courtesy when he's on this program. Because I want to hear his heart. But I, as a, as a religious radio station... I want the choice to have him on. I don't want the law to tell me that I have to. That's religious freedom. Let's go to the phones where Jeff is standing by. Uh, Jeff, you're live on The View from a Pew. What's going on? Hey, so is Dowling a religious school? Yes. And so they're tied to uh, the Bible, right? Yes. They're to, they're, they're to hold up uh, God's standards, right? Catholic school. So... Then would they? Would you hire somebody into a ministry? Because they're a ministry, right? Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, yeah, I suppose everybody is. He, he's an education more. So, are they? I mean, would you hire somebody into your ministry that is um, openly having an affair? No, no. Because that's. A, I mean, it's adultery. What he's doing is adultery. He's having. But, but, but uh, relations with somebody that's not his wife. But 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 I I, I covet every day. I right. covet every day. That is the sin I cannot get past. And, but you and, don't you don't go on saying that it's okay. No, I don't. And no, I don't. Tyler, by trying to marry another man, is trying to say it's okay. But Mac, you sin every day, but you're not asking the government to legalize your sins and legalize your behavior. But that's what the homosexual community is asking uh, us to do, is to legalize, tolerate their behavior, uh, ordain their marriages, and count them as married with tax privileges and benefit privileges um, like they're a married heterosexual couple. Amen. Amen. Jeff, I'll give you the last word before we hit break. I think I think Frank hit that one. He's 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 right on with that. So y'all have a good day. All right, Jeff. Thanks for thanks, uh, Jeff. listening and thanks for calling in. And that's uh, Jeff. I happen to know who Jeff is. I didn't set that up. I just happen to uh, know who he is, and he's the guy that is planting the first family church in uh, Altoona uh, for the folks in Ankeny. Good guy. Very good guy. Good good Jesus guy. All right, we're going to take our last break, and uh, during that time, I'll allow the phone lines open. You can call in. We'll uh, stack, or in other words, we'll um, um, uh, put a couple people on hold. We'll talk to you in the last eight minutes of the show. Should Dowling cave? The students came out today. Alumni have come out today. 
staff members have come out today and said this is a quality teacher we've had him in our system he's been proven he's been tested and he's a good man he's a good coach the kids like him we want him here and we don't want to look like bigots well Dallin, you're not you're not being bigots you're you're being christ-like and following the word of god or are they that's next, live here on The View from a Pew on the Truth. Credit cards are like grandkids. They love you, sometimes get out of control, and it's fun to get a new one. Who can stop them from piling on? Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of Des Moines. At the end of the day, you can return the grandkids, but you're stuck paying off bad credit card debt. We'll help you put the fun back into using credit cards responsibly. Right, kids? Yeah! If you need help getting credit cards off your back, call Consumer Credit of Des Moines. Hey. Let me let you in on a little secret. You ready? Always try to do business with people, not places. Especially if you seek honest Christian business people. And when it comes to my car, I really need to trust who's working on it. Now, my family is so blessed. A few years ago, we found a family-owned automobile repair shop that operates as a Christian business also. Open, honest, Reliable, trustworthy. It's Amco on Hickman Road in front of Kmart. And it's a family-owned Christian operating business. This family treats your car as if it was their car. Everything from oil changes to transmission repair and everything in between. So the next time you feel the need to be at peace with your choice of who you can trust with your car, give Amco on Hickman a chance to serve you. And tell them Max sent you. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. If you sit in the back view or the front view, it's your voice we want to hear. The phone lines are open, so call 244-0077. Now, here's J. Michael McCoy. Ten minutes for the top Salem Radio Network News and Michael Mudloff. Ryan, my producer, because I can see him. We have a big window between us. He's turning into Buddy Rich in there. <laughs> he's, he's drumming. He's jamming. Yeah, he, he's drumming to the, the music. All right, let's go to the phones. We're talking about Dowling. Uh, the kids came out. The alumni came out. Uh, the staff came out, some of them, some of them, and did a protest today about one thirty, two o'clock. You'll see it on Channel 8 tonight. Um, they want this guy hired, this Tyler McCubbin, who is uh, openly gay, but not outwardly gay. And I want to make that point. This man does not wear it on his sleeve. He is not like the guy that went to the Gortz house, knowing they were Christian-owned, asked them if they do their wedding, knowing they'd get a no and then sued them and eventually put them out of business. And that's a business right here in town in Grimes. So don't sure. think this only happens someplace far away in bad, bad land. This is happening right now. And there's a different case in West Des Moines because the only way Dowling knew that he was in a same-sex relationship is they went to his Facebook page. And I'm not saying that's not viable, viable. I'm just telling you, this guy does not walk around Dowling High School and say, hey, I'm gay. But that's standard procedure for businesses now to uh, look at social media. Let's go to the phones. Uh, who, what's Larry. It? Larry, Larry, you're live on The View from a Pew. How you doing, Larry? Dude, I'm doing good. How are you guys doing? Good. So what's on your mind with this? Do you think Dowling should cave? You know, I was looking at it from a different perspective briefly. I was thinking, what would happen if the tax structure was different and... There was no tax incentive for married couples or non-married couples tax-wise. And the government set it up that way. Would they have a leg to stand on as far as their legitimacy of, you know, we're doing it. We're only doing this because, you know, when somebody's sick, we don't have rights to go into the hospital and talk to them and all that kind of 
stuff that happens with this whole social stuff that happens with, you know, these couples. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, and and between you and me, I think the government ought to get out of marriage altogether. My, my wife's and mine, uh, your wife and yours, your children. I, I don't think the government belongs there. But you know why they are in it? For the money. Taxes. Yeah, yeah taxes. Yeah, exactly. And they've, they've structured our whole society so that people have to work just to make ends meet. Well, Larry, they're called progressives for a reason. And and, yeah. and and the only difference between a progressive and a liberal is the, the progressives are willing to be a little bit more patient to get to the same destination, a chip away at a time. Well, but they're, better uh, at, they're also better at deceiving than uh, the other side. But That's they right. started out with this reasonable request that, that, that sick, people should be able to see their dying loved one in the hospital. And, and anyone but a cold-hearted person would say, oh, we can't do that. But that was just a stepping stone of the agenda that is now being full-blown. And it's, it's, it, they're after the, there's, there's no doubt they're after the Bennies, they're after the Benjamins. But, but I'm telling you that lukewarm Christians are a stumbling block to unbelievers. Yeah, I agree with you there. Larry, I, I, I totally agree with you. I appreciate you calling. You call any time. It's your voice we want to hear. All right. Sounds good. Thanks. You know, and, and, and everybody knows where I come from on this. Uh, what I dislike very, very, very much is the LGBT question mark um, agenda. Because I think it's the accuser's agenda. I think that he wants us to disavow God every way we can. And by the way, he's winning. Um, he wants to turn our society into a God doesn't matter society. Only what I feel matters society. Well, Mac, you can't praise Christ and praise the world with the same breath. So as I said before, if, if you're going to But make... you can be too heaven-minded to be any earthly good, too. Well, yeah, I agree. We live in this planet until Christ comes, and we need to be friends, and we need to lift people up. And I don't want to see homosexuals arrested on sodomy laws. I don't want to see them mistreated, but that's a far cry from legalizing marriage. Uh, a marriage was an institution that came out of Eden, and God doesn't change one drop, one iota, and what he created then, he said, let no man put it asunder. That means an individual marriage, and that means his institution of marriage that if I'm the Lord of something, that means I have complete control over it and don't mess with the institution. I've got someone on Facebook, and I don't need to identify them, but they're telling me that uh, McCubbin was, in fact, open about his relationship at Dowling. Uh, in fact, he was in your face about it. Some of the kids knew about it, uh, and this is coming from a person or coach. Uh, that this person on Facebook, he's private messaged me, so I'm going to leave him anonymous. Well, as I mentioned to you the other day, Tammy so Bruce— I might be wrong on that. Tammy Bruce is a professed lesbian, and she basically left the Democratic Party uh, because of the Clintons and the attacks that they got, uh, you know, over the women's issues, that, that Clinton was basically a serial uh, uh, harasser at minimum. And she basically supports this 100 percent, that Christians— have to have the ability to have their religious rights, their religious freedoms untrampled on. So she stands for the Republican side of this, that uh, the Democrats are wrong on this issue. Real quick, before we run out of time, if we have religious freedom, it, it, can a Muslim a man tell his wife that she has to wear a burqa in public, that, she, uh, that he can beat her, if she is out of line, because that's within their religion, and that she can't drive a car, because that's the slippery slope we got to be careful of here. Well, they have to adhere a little bit to our laws. I mean, uh, the, the, there's religious freedom until uh, somebody once said, "You swing your fist in the air, but your freedom stops where my nose starts." Okay, so why why does Tyler McCubbin get his nose smacked? Well, he's not. Uh, what I'm saying, if this is Dowling standards and Tyler McCoven knew that, then Tyler McCoven doesn't have a case or a leg to stand on if he knew those standards going in. Yeah, I would agree with you there. That's what I don't like about the people that went to the Gord House. They, they knew that they were going to deal with Dick and Betty, who were Mennonite ministers, and he knew. They knew, and they put him out of business. 
I don't understand why you just don't go down the road and find someplace else. And the tip off of that, you don't see him going against Mohammed and Sons or Ahmed and Sons or Eli and Sons, something, bakery, photography, whatever. They're going after and targeting Christians. All right, tomorrow, one of my favorite people to have on the radio is an agnostic. I've got another one coming on tomorrow. His name is uh, Jeremy, and uh, we're going to have good conversation, healthy conversation. Uh, why do I bring these people and, and give them a, a, a plan or a, give them a, a seat on my in my table? Because I want to learn. You know, I want to learn what the enemy's doing. I, wa- I don't want to be a low information voter and, and only watch the people on TV or read the blogs that I agree with. I want to know how the enemy thinks, because that way, maybe just maybe that you and I can learn how to bring salvation to the atheist, bring salvation to the sexual deviant, bring salvation to the uh, agnostic, uh, bring salvation to our loved ones, because that's who we're talking about. So I'll see you tomorrow with Jeremy and and Frank Thomas over here. And until then, find somebody that uh, you just can't forgive, somebody that has just absolutely burned the last nerve you have. And tonight, on your knees in front of Jesus, please forgive them. See you tomorrow.